Stink was my boyfriend of three years. Like, we was toxic. We wasn't never a perfect relationship. No relationship is, and I'm not gonna lie like we was. But we definitely loved each other so much with our entire whole hearts. And I call him Stink, but his real name is Gary. But I, everybody calls him Stink, if we're being honest. Madison is Stink's baby mom. They got three kids together. And we never really got along. Me and Madison, we always, when Stink was alive, me and her would bicker back and forth. You feel me? That's, that's what we did. That's what Stink made us do, really, because he couldn't choose. Like, he, if we, one of us would break up with him, he, that's, he was, you know what I'm saying? The other door was probably open, and it just caused drama between me and Madison. So me and Madison never really got along ever a day in our life. On September 23rd, um, when we woke up for work that morning, the night before we had got into a big old fight, and so that morning was real silent. We're grabbing our stuff, we're hurrying, we're rushing because we're both late. We leave out the door at about 6.04 to 6.07. Somewhere around them times, we walk out my door. And um, I didn't even kiss him goodbye. I didn't hug him goodbye. I didn't tell him I love him. The whole time I was at work, I, w I was thinking like I should call Stink. Like I just felt something was wrong because a couple days prior to his death, like maybe even a week before, it was about five to seven days before, I have to drive by Madison's house to get to work. And every morning when I drove by, there would be this black Chrysler outside of her house. And when I pulled off, I drove by her house because I have to, that's the way I take to work. And I seen the black Chrysler. And when I seen that black Chrysler outside, you know, my heart kind of like sank. Like I felt like, so I'm like, man, Stink gonna see that and go crazy. One of his friends called me while I was at work and um, they told me that uh, Stink got shot last night. And I'm like, you lying. I called his job and um, his job answered the phone and was like, if you're his real friend, you know what happened to him. And I just remember going outside and screaming so loud because I didn't believe it at all, I swear to God. Because that don't make no sense. He was pronounced dead at 6.18 a.m. We left my house no later than 6.07. So I, I estimate, I guesstimate at 6.05 a.m. we left my house. That was 13 minutes and his life was gone. I heard a couple different stories on what happened that morning. Um, but the main story that's going around is that when he pulled up to Madison's house, he went inside. He was calling her phone, telling her, I'm gonna come inside and I'm gonna kill you both. And she was inside laying in her bed naked with her boyfriend or her, the guy she was messing with. And when he went inside the house, he went up the stairs and he, he busted in the bedroom door and he started shooting just everywhere. Just bullets started flying is what the story is. Madison was in the closet at this point, I guess. She had time to get dressed because she was naked. She had time to get dressed and put herself in the closet and hide herself and the kid. I'm not sure how the guy she was with got a gun. I'm not sure if it was hers because it was sitting on the bed stand and she does have a gun that she keeps on the bed stand. So I think it was her gun that he used to kill Stink. Somehow in between the times of Stink being able to shoot off his entire gun, the, every single bullet in his gun, that guy was able to pick up the gun on the bedside table and shoot Stink back and kill him with one bullet, one bullet. And it doesn't make sense because if Stink busted in the door while he did it, so he would have been at the top of the stairs, he would have got shot while he was still in bed. But that's not what happened. Stink was found at the bottom of the stairs in a pool of blood, and she took a picture of the blood that he was laying in. She didn't even call 911 until 30 minutes go by. And the fire station is four houses down from her house. She called his family first and told his family what happened. And the guy who shot Stink and killed him was still inside the house when the family arrived. He was walking in and out of the house like he owned it, like he was comfortable there. And apparently he got shot in the arm, but didn't nobody go to the hospital. Madison is going around saying that I somehow, I had time to pull up to Madison's house, see that black Chrysler outside, take a picture, send it to Stink, call Stink, let him know that somebody is outside of his baby mom's and drive off before he got there. There's a lot of parts of the story that don't make sense. And the only person who's gonna make them make sense is Madison because she's the only one who knows. What is your relationship with Gracie? Honestly, she was just a side bitch. She was just... For, for Gary? Yes. Also, AKA Stink? Yes. Okay. It was multiple of them. It wasn't even just her, it was multiple, multiple of them. But, but were she's... you, but you knew you weren't one-on-one -on -one with Gary? 
I, I, yeah, me and him wasn't together at that time. But you had a, a child with him. I have three children with yeah. him, yes. I yeah. was with him for nine years. Yeah. And you would continually sleep with him? Yes. Yeah. Why'd you, I'm just curious, why, why would you do that? I wanted my family. I wanted to work things out. Even though you knew he was sleeping with various other women. All right. So then, but you knew Gracie was in the picture. Yeah. Now, how'd you know about that? I uh, first found out about Gracie when I, ha I was in the hospital with my last child. She it was about two and a half years ago. And when I had her, she ended up having to go to the NICU. She almost died. And one of my neighbors texted me and was like, um, I, got I got tea for you. I was like, what? She was like, uh, your baby dad's in the house with another female. Sent me pictures of the, of the car. While so you're in like, the hospital almost dying. With my daughters almost dying. Right. So I'm in the I'm in the hospital. I'm like, you're lying. His like, daughter. Yeah, his, and he's his not own at the daughter, hospital. not at the hospital or anything. And he's messing around with another girl. Yeah, in my house. How do you feel about what Gracie is saying on the tape? I like something to me. I just feel like she had to be the one that called him or texted him and was like, oh, do you know who's at Madison's because house? Because you did have this other guy in your house. Yes, he yeah. was. Yes. Um, so it worked both ways. Gary was sleeping with other people, and you were sleeping with other people. Well, this was the first time I ever talked to anybody else within the whole nine years. He was outside your house. Yes, I heard when he was on the phone, he was banging on the door. He was like, bitch, open the door. I'm like, stink, bro, just leave. Like, we're not together. Like, just go. There's no reason that you're even here. You didn't here. have a key to your house? No. Okay. Did Gary carry a gun around with him? Yeah. And was it your gun that the dude had, or he had his own no, gun? No, he had his own gun. So own when gun. I hung up the phone, I was like, I got, I instantly got up. First of all, I was not naked in my bed. I had a little robe thing on, so I got up and I just went right over to my closet. By the time I, I opened my closet and opened one of my drawers, I have like a little walk-in closet. So I open up the drawer and all I hear is boom, 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 boom. So you're in a closet. I'm in the closet trying to find clothes. And then out in the bedroom you hear gun spraying. Yes, and I'm in the closet. I'm literally covering my ears. I'm like, stop, stop, stop. Then I was thinking like, my daughter, like, uh, like, what's going on? Yeah. Like, my daughter, so she, my How first... old is your daughter at the time? Two. And she's, like, sleeping at 6 in the morning, right? Yeah. Okay. So your baby's in the house. His baby, and he's just shooting up the house with because there's a guy laying in the bed. Now, is he shooting at the guy, or is he just spraying everything? The way the bullets looked, it was just everywhere, literally everywhere. And but he's like... trying to hit the other mm -hmm. dude, right? Mm-hmm. So... When I was in the closet and I heard that, I was like crouched down, I was covering my ears, I'm like, stop, stop. And then I seen the dude on the floor as, as I'm walking out. And I didn't see Gary, I thought Gary ran. I thought he hit him and I thought he ran. So I went to my daughter to check on her, I looked at her, she was like, I was like, okay, she's fine, I'm calling uh, his family. I was like, he just- You didn't call police. I didn't know what to do, I called his family. I was like, he just broke into my okay, house. Okay, again, what the is going on here? I mean. Who's first on scene? Police, Gary's family, firemen, his, who? His family was the first one, so. The, and where's dude? That's the crazy thing, because in the midst that's of the me. That's the crazy thing. In, in the midst of me calling the cops and dealing with it, he ran downstairs, ran outside, left. When Gary's mom got there, he comes back in the house and runs back upstairs. So Why? You never asked him? No, I blocked the guy on everything. Afterwards, Why? because my my children's father is dead now. Like I don't but care. It's not, it's not his fault. It's just the simple fact. If, like, listen, if I'm laying in bed with you and a guy breaks in and starts shooting up the place and I have a gun next to me, I'm probably going to shoot the guy who's shooting at me. Madison Bryant, you could have called the cops. His family was close, but do you know? You know the police station was closer. It is at the end of your road. You could have saved him. That morning, did you drive by her house? Yes. Did you see the car? Yes. Okay, but you didn't no. call Stink? No. You didn't say, hey, no. the dude's there? My last words to Stink when we walked out the house because we were supposed to go to a haunted house on Saturday night because we got into a fight the night before. It was a real bad fight. And um, my last words were, are we still going to the haunted house? He said, we'll see. But you have to understand where I'm coming from, too. I'm being accused of this stuff. I'm being told I can't go to his funeral. I have, we have kids together. People don't even understand or care the fact that my kids are going through this. My kids have been oh, alone this whole entire time. And I cared about the kids and you the know whole time. How when Gary was leaving the place you were staying he, that morning, 
Did you know he was going over to her house? No, I had no idea. I had no he idea didn't, so he was he, going over to at, her when, house. It, it, according to you, when you left after the haunted house comment, he didn't say, I'm going to go over there and kill mm -mm. that guy. I left out the front door. He left out the back. And then how did you find out that he had been shot? Um, it was 8 o'clock in the morning. I was at work, and one of his friends had called me and told me that Sting got shot last night. Uh, he's dead. But he only got shot a couple hours exactly. before. Exactly. And he told me last night. So yeah. on the phone, I was confused. I was like, you're literally lying. Stink was with me last night. Those right. were my exact words. And Stink And he always... meant that Stink just got shot. Yeah, I yeah. guess. And um, Stink always cried wolf. One time he flipped his truck. One time he had do a seizure. Think, seizure. Do you think that she set Stink up? I don't know. That's a tricky question. Do I think Madison um, set to like literally set the whole thing up. No, do I think she could have prevented it? Yes, that guy. How should, could she have prevented how? it? Because if you knew, you know, Stink, what type of guy he I is. I didn't know he was gonna come to my house. I didn't talk to him for a whole month before. He wasn't coming to see the kids or anything. He you, was calling me in the mornings or at night, telling the kids good night or good morning. But that was it. He wasn't popping up my house could, like he used on, to. Hold, or not, how nothing. could she prevented him? You could have prevented it by taking, telling the guy. First of all, either way it went, you was setting somebody up low key because you didn't even wake the guy up and let him know Stink coming in there. To he kill was him. up. The other dude was oh, up. So he was up. Yeah. So he was awake. So he yeah. heard Stink banging on the door. Yes. So he was waiting at the top of the stairs. That's why Stink got shot no. in the back. Okay. You took a lie detector test. I did. On the day in question, did you send pictures of the car in front of Madison's house to Gary? prior to him going home? You answered no. Did you know prior to the shooting that Gary was going to the house with a gun with intent to hurt someone? You answered no. Results came back the same to each of those two questions, and it came back that Gracie told the truth. You know, he loved the guy. He was no angel. But so. he also just, he didn't deserve that. The whole situation, it just doesn't You know doesn't what, make deserves sense. got nothing to do with it. Actions have consequences. And when you carry a gun and you start spraying a house and somebody else has a gun, you might end up dead. So you can't say he doesn't deserve to be dead. You know, if he, if he didn't break into your house, if he didn't start shooting up the house, guess what? Gary probably would still be here. Madison, you came here to took a lie detector test and we asked you, did you shoot Gary causing his death? You answered no. On the day in question, do you have knowledge of Gary's alleged shooter actually being shot? You answered yes. On the day in question, did you warn Gary's shooter that he was coming in the house? You answered no. Uh, the results came back all the same, and it came back that you told the truth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Literally everybody, I went through everything by myself. Everything, dealing with my kids by myself. My kids felt alone. I had to call them and ask them if we could tell my kids together as a family to tell them that their dad is now an angel, that he is in heaven. And nobody, they wouldn't, no. The kids can, but you can't. You had something to do with it, no. The police ever suspect you? No. Were you a suspect? No, but no. I complied with everything. I right. did the DNA, I did everything. They took my gun out my head. Uh, they, right. they took everything. Okay. You shouldn't be in relations where your children could get shot in their own home. That's what I'm trying to tell you. These, you should pick a man that is not violent, that's not going to spray up his own house with his children in it with a gun. When you go home, when this show airs, watch it. I don't say that to a lot of our guests, but I think the two of you really need to watch the show, watch listen to the stories you said, and say, what the hell was I? Nah, because I'm so, I'm very self-aware. I know. I know I can Even do better. Even though I, I it came better. out that I told the truth, I feel like they're all still gonna blame me. They are. It's it gonna still be my fault. And it's like, will be. But who cares? That's why I came here because I can't have but that on told, me. Okay, like, but you've told the truth, and I hope that helps you when you go back home. I really do. All I'm telling you is, wake up and do what's best for yourself and your kids. Good luck. Guys. Very nice meeting. Click here to watch more Wilco's. Click here to subscribe and get a front row seat for all the action. Can you relate to this story? Go to www.stewilcos.com to get my help.